What's going on guys, Card Mechanic here, and today I'm going to be teaching you a pretty awesome card trick. Let's do it. Alright, now check this out. We'll split the deck into about three piles. Uh, let's just say that's the first pile right here. Um, let's just say that's the second pile, and there's the third pile. Now I'll have a spectator select the card from the first pile. Let's just say this one right here. It really doesn't matter if I see it. So in this case, it's the four of spades. Take that, I'll shuffle that right into the deck. This should be good enough there. And now if we have a second spectator. If we have a second spectator select the card. If not, then the first spectator will just select two cards. It is the ace of spades, one of my favorite cards. Take that also, boom. Shuffle it right into the deck. You know what? I can go a bit. I can go a bit crazier with shuffling, and uh, you know I'll even give it a cut. Boom. Boom. Insane. All right. Now since the first two spectators got to select the card, it should be almost only fair if I select the card as well. So let's just say I want this card right here, the two of clubs. So I'll take the two of clubs. I'll leave it face up, and I'll throw these cards on top. Then I'll throw this right on top of there. Now from here, I'll split the deck about in half or as close to half as I possibly can. Then I'll give the cards a nice little shuffle here. Me, close enough. Boom, nice little shuffle. I'll even shuffle it up like this or I can just go crazy with the shuffling. All right, now here's what gets good. I'll give the deck a nice cut and they'll spread the cards out. And of course, we'll see my two of clubs face up, but now you see it's sandwiched between two cards, like it should be, like all the time, unless it's top or bottom. So we'll remove these cards, and we'll just take a look at what these cards are. And they are the ace of spades and the four of spades. Okay, so quick prereq for this trick, you will need 52 cards. If you don't have 52 cards, that'll be a problem. So get 52 cards. Now starting off, we break the deck into three separate piles. The first pile will have 16 cards, the second pile, it doesn't really matter how many cards, and the third pile has to have at least 12 cards. And we'll get into all that in a quick minute. So, first pile has 16 cards. Now there are several ways you can get 16 cards counted off without the spectator really knowing about it. The uh, first way is to count off you know, 16 cards like this, which I highly discourage you from doing that. The method I think you should probably use is count off by blocks. So I use blocks of three, so three blocks of five, and then just a one single card. So that'll give you 16. So I do one, two, three, 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 and one. So that gives me 16 cards there. Now, if you're not comfortable counting off cards like that, you can also start off with, uh, I guess, kind of a setup where you count off 16 cards in advance and you get a pinky break underneath those 16 cards. So when then when you count them out, you boom, are ready and set up with 16 cards. Now from here, what I like to do, I like to hand the deck over to the spectator and tell them to get about half the deck and cut that off. So about half the deck, cut it off and place it here. And the remaining cards put in their own separate pile. This way you've shown the spectator that you took some cards, they could take whatever, how many cards they want. And then the last deck is just left over. So I like to give as much control to the spectator as possible because this will improve your performance because the longer the cards are in the spectator's hands, the more they do with the cards, the better their reaction is going to be. So now that you have your 16 cards in this pile, you have the spectator select a card from the pile. Here it's the three of clubs. So now we'll take the three of clubs. We tell the spectator, it doesn't matter if you see the three of clubs or not, but we'll take it, we'll lose it in the deck. But what you're actually going to do is keep the card controlled on top. And now the best way I think to do it is to do a false overhand shuffle. I've made a video on that. And all you're really doing is doing a controlled overhand shuffle and just bringing that three of clubs back to the top, right? So you say, okay, shuffle, I'm gonna shuffle this up. So you do the false overhand shuffle, control that to the top, put that over to the side. Now, of course, the spectator doesn't know where that card is. Now, if you have multiple spectators, I like to allow someone else to pick a second card out. So let's say this one, the Jack of Diamonds. And now you wanna control this Jack of Diamonds to the bottom of this packet here. So again, you could do the overhand shuffle, 
but instead of you know uh, doing a fake shuffle where you control back to the top just peel off the top card and then shuffle the rest of the cards on top of it so up to speed it looks like a normal over the hand shuffle and the card is controlled to the bottom so now you have these two and now as for the last packet I tell the spectator since you got to pick a card you got to pick a card I think I should also be allowed to pick a card so you go through the deck you're going to flip over the 11th card in this deck right here so again I do the same thing I go blocks of three do three 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 one and then the next card here right now if you're not comfortable doing that and you actually want to count off cards you can make the spectator seem like you're choosing what card you want to pick so you can just pretend to be counting off cards like this and being you know indecisive saying um what card do I want and then once you get to the 11th card you flip it over and be like this is the one I want so I recommend counting by you know going by blocks of three and then uh, the single one but it's whatever you find more comfortable right so yeah that's there and we leave it flipped over like this now one more tip when you're counting off blocks of cards like this if you want to get better at it start off slow just push over three cards and figure out um, what effort it takes for you to push over three cards or push over two cards however many you know what the amount of cards you want in each block so it starts slowly and then once you start getting better you can start you know counting the cards a lot faster all right so that's just a quick tip now we have the nine of spades here face up put that on top keep the nine of spades as is do not shuffle this packet now put this packet on top of the center packet and take the whole thing and put that on top of the first packet right so from here you're going to want to cut the deck as close to the center as possible so now this mostly comes from practice and this is not super easy to do but you want to really cut it as close to the center as possible I somehow managed to cut it at the center this time it's not always the case but generally if it's one to two cards off you'll be completely fine All right so now you cut that off and now you're going to do what is known as a pharaoh shuffle now, if you don't know how to do a Pharaoh Shuffle, you can go on YouTube and look up F-A-R-O, Pharaoh Shuffle, and tutorial, how to do whatever it is, and learn how to do that if you don't know how to do that. But all that pretty much is, is it's pretty much an interleaving of the cards at like a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. So you can see the cards are interleaved one-to-one, one-to-one, one-to-one like that, right? And this is really, you know, necessary for the trick because if you see... Uh, if the cards are interleaved properly, the um, card that we have facing the opposite direction will land between the Jack of Diamonds and the Three of Clubs, which were the cards that were selected by the spectator. So now once you have this, shuffle that up. And you're pretty much all set. I like to also do a false shuffle that I learned from uh, Miss Mag's channel. So I'll put a link to that in the description so you can check that out. And all that pretty much looks like is you take some cards off the top. Right, then you switch here, you bring this up on top, take some cards off the bottom, put them on top, then take some cards off the top, put them on bottom, you know, keep doing that. So it looks like you're messing up the cards, when in actuality you're not really doing anything. It's similar to just to performing a cut. Right, so if you want to make your trick seem more, I guess, in-depth, like more shuffling's going on, you can add that to, it, uh, to your trick. So now you spread the cards out, you tell a spectator, there's one card facing up. And now this card is sandwiched between two cards. And then you slowly take that away, let them take it out, and reveal their cards, the Jack of Diamonds and the Three of Clubs. Now like I was saying, this is an intermediate level trick, so it's not super easy to pull off. Uh, a few things that I found difficult while doing this, one, we're counting the blocks of cards off, because if you really don't know what you're doing there, or it's hard for you to talk and do it at the same time, it's not easy at all. The second thing is cutting the deck uh, in half and that just literally comes from practice so you can just practice cutting in half seeing if you're evenly there and I just somehow managed to get there every time even though I'm not 100% sure but I just managed to do that so I'm sure that comes with practice so just keep practicing that and of course the last thing is the Pharaoh shuffle and to be honest I still have trouble doing the Pharaoh shuffle um, 100% because oops. If you take a look, um, all these are fine, and then I mess up like one in between here and there. So as long as um, when you're doing the Pharaoh Shuffle, 
about the first half has been uh, weaved together properly, then you're still gonna be set and the trick is going to work fine. Right, so especially if you're a beginner, you definitely need to practice those three things before going out and performing this trick. And if you already know those techniques, then uh, you're already better off than me at performing this trick. So go out and impress some people because I know this trick definitely blew my mind when I first saw it. So that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go check out my Patreon page to help support my channel because that really means a lot and you'll get some really cool perks while doing it as well. So the link to that is in the description and also in the description is the link to all my social media. So make sure to follow me on there as well. And uh, I think that's about it. All that being said, I will see you in the next video. Welcome to the end screen. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe because subscribing is good. Thanks for watching.